Hey guys, I understand the whole book of Revelation, and I want to give you a little rundown and some points that'll make you understand the whole book of Revelation too. It's actually simple, and there's been billions of videos probably, and sermons put together, you know. There's been millions of people, millions of books, everybody thinks they know it, they've been saying it for years. But I actually understand it, and I can give you a lot of points to make you understand the book of Revelation completely. Once you see the book of Revelation, you'll know that all this already happened by 70 AD and it's completely done. And everything will fit together perfectly for you. So I'm going to give you the points and the parts where people get really mixed up. <clears throat> the first chapter, John is on the Isle of Patmos. He was sent there by Emperor Nero. He was told and he saw this. He went out in the spirit and saw everything to tell the churches. The seven churches which were in Asia, right up from Patmos on the map. I don't know which way this will be facing. But he sent it by messengers and told each church what they needed to know. Next, we see the lamb slain before the throne. The lamb slain, at this point, you must know that whenever this lamb is slain, that Satan still rules. Like it said in the uh, other parts of the Bible, that if Satan had known what would happen if he killed Christ, that he wouldn't have killed him. And Satan ruled. He set him up on the pinnacle of the temple and said, all these things have been delivered to me, and I'll give them to you if you cast yourself down. So he was ruling at this time. God had to send Christ so that he could take it all back, so he could fulfill the law, fulfill the old world, and bring us a new, completely new world in a completely new way. John wept because nobody was able to open these seals to bring it back to God. To Nobody was worthy, but Jesus was found worthy. So Jesus was able to open the seals. Whenever Jesus died, he was caught up to heaven. He was the lamb slain, and then he started opening these seals. Satan is still ruling at this time. So whenever he opened the seals, he took peace from the earth. The Jews and everybody, they killed each other, mother against mother, sister against sister, like Jesus said it would be. Uh, there was times of poverty, and there was times of, they even thought that maybe the bubonic plague was back then, they don't know what it was, but there were plagues in that time too, like under the fourth seal, and there was a, and Nero killing them with beasts, and Nero uh, tribulation, this is them going through the tribulation, they weren't part of the wrath, they were not appointed unto wrath, but they were warned about it, and got out and fled Judea, but, um, so those are the first four seals. You got someone conquering, you got the black horse, which is a measure of wheat for a penny, a measure of barley for a penny, and that is um, poverty, and then you've got death and famine through plagues, and you've got peace taken from them where they're killing each other over their beliefs and whatnot. Those are the first four seals. Under the fifth seal, the people who went through this tribulation with Nero, who were burned for candlelight in his uh, courtyard and everything else, uh, the people who went through this tribulation, they were waiting under the altar, and they said, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not avenge our blood on them which dwell on the earth? And he said, Yet a little while until your fellow brethren are killed as you were. This is very important. The dead in Christ were waiting under the altar. They knew that that was where Christ would return. And they were killed in Christ, and the temple was still standing. They were waiting under the altar. They knew that whenever the temple was destroyed, that that would be the end. That was the sign of his coming. Uh, not one stone in the temple would be left upon another. The sixth seal starts the wrath of the Lamb. This is around 66 AD. The sixth seal starts the wrath. This is whenever Christ appeared. And in history, whenever he came, this is the dead in Christ rising first. This was the dead. He said, who are these that are arrayed in white robes? And he said, these are they which came out of great tribulation, and they loved not their lives to the death, and they were of Jesus Christ and kept his testimony. They were the dead that were waiting under the altar. In 66 AD, it is recorded by Tacitus, who was born like 14 years before 70 AD. And you got to understand, a 14-year-old kid back then, you could have been emperor at that time, and people would have respected you highly. They were not like the way we see kids today. You know, they're much more mature. And he saw these things, and he witnessed these things, and he read plenty of books that happened in that time that we don't even have access to anymore. And he wrote these things that they said that the dead, they saw apparitions coming up out of their graves and out of the temple and into the sky. This is the first resurrection. The 144,000 had to be killed first. If you go back to the beginning chapters of Revelation, he said what would happen. 
that they would reign with him. They would be given 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And the 144,000 would reign with him and they'd sit down with him to judge Israel and break the nations of Israel into shivers. They were also given the rod of iron with Christ and broke the nations into shivers. This is whenever the reign of Christ starts, whenever the first resurrection happens. The first resurrection of the dead, you got to understand, the catching away is not a resurrection. The first resurrection was a resurrection of the dead. You have to be dead to resurrect, you know. Those who died, once the 144,000 and the apostles were dead, Jesus came back. This is whenever the wrath of the Lamb starts under the sixth seal, and they cried for the mountains and rocks to fall on them and hide them from him that sat on the throne, right? And he made war over the next three and a half years. All right, listen. Over the next three and a half years is whenever he sounded the trumpets. You can go read the trumpets and what happened. Yes, a third of the waters were made blood around Jerusalem. The wrath came on Jerusalem. A third of the waters were made blood. Everything that they said happened, happened. There were fires that burned it. There were earthquakes that split the city and knocked a lot of it down. Back in history, they wrote that there were earthquakes that shook the whole universe back then. So hang on. But it's important to note, as we're getting in these next chapters, that 66 AD is whenever the dead in Christ, the first resurrection, the 144,000 were with him, and this is whenever he started sounding the trumpets, but this is also whenever Satan was thrown into the bottomless pit, which we're getting into throughout the next chapters. Okay, and as you are reading these trumpets in the middle, uh, towards the end, in the 10th chapter, it says, and an angel came down having a little book in his hand, which they didn't have books back then. It was a little scroll in his hand. And he put one foot on the sea and one foot on the earth. And seven angels uttered their voices, and he swore that there would be time no longer. This isn't actual physical time. This is something that you need to know. This is the time of the Jews. This is whenever the times of the Gentiles would start. This is the time of the Jews would be no longer. Now that little book that he had in his hand and what the angels uttered was they said, this is the mark of the beast. And he said, See, he said, do not write what the seven angels uttered. And he said, John, eat this little book, for you must prophesy again before many nations, kindreds, tongues, and kings. John got off of Patmos, and he was one of the two witnesses that went and preached against the mark of the beast and the temple, and they were killed. And this is also written in history about two witnesses that were there uh, preaching. So... So in 66 AD, we see the dead rose. This is also whenever he who letteth would let until he be taken out of the way, which was God. And he got out of, he told them to get out of the temple in history. Whenever the armies came, they saw armies running on the clouds too. Josephus said if you hadn't have been there to see it, you wouldn't believe it because it was a thing of fairy tales or whatever word he used, but it meant fairy tales, right? And a voice came up in the temple and said, get thee hence. And the glory cloud moved off the temple and went into the mountains. Just as Jesus said, he said, whenever you see the armies come to Jerusalem, get out, head into the mountains and look up for your redemption draws nigh because this place is about to be made desolate. So get out and flee into the mountains. Okay. This is also whenever Satan was cast into the bottomless pit and the reign of Christ started because what did they do? What was Christ's reign? It was the wrath. It was to destroy the nations of Israel, right? And the cities. And all the people. And they 144,000 were also ruling with Jesus. One beast came up out of the sea. One beast came up out of the land. This is why the angel that put one foot on the sea and one foot on the earth and had the little scroll in his hand said that this was the mark of the beast. And he said not to take the mark of the beast. But he didn't want them to know what it was yet. And what it was was a form that they made, that they made speak. And they said, the prophets say, the prophets say, the prophets say. And the people who didn't believe in Christ said that the temple would not be destroyed. And they stayed in Jerusalem to fight. And they said it was God's temple, but it was no longer God's temple. God moved out of the temple so that this place could be destroyed. And the man of sin could come, which brought the mark of the beast, which was them saying the law. The law was given as a curse to put the sign in their hand and in their forehead, as it says in Deuteronomy and Exodus. Right? It gave them a sign in their hand and in their forehead. And... Jesus fulfilled this curse, and whenever he came back, 
those people kept the law. They said that Christ was not the Messiah. This was the abomination that was going to make this place desolate. Now we're moving to chapter 11. He says, John arise, measure the temple, the altar, and them that worship therein. So John arose, measured the temple, which was still standing, the altar, and them that worship therein. Okay? The court that was without the temple he left out, for it was given unto the Gentiles, so that they could trod it under six, uh, underfoot forty-two months, until the times of the Gentiles were fulfilled. Just as Jesus said, in Luke and Matthew, that whenever the Gentile armies came, they would leave that place desolate, and they would trample the city underfoot until the times of the Gentiles were fulfilled. This was 42 months from 66 to 70 AD. So stay with the story here. Now the trumpets were being sounded from 66 to almost 70 AD whenever the temple was destroyed, probably in 70 AD, but almost until the end whenever the temple was destroyed. Now, chapter 12 goes back again. All right, so it tells you about the seals, the lamb being slain. Chapter 12 goes back and it talks to you about Israel. Israel birthed a son. Satan was ruling. He was in heaven. He was still in heaven at this time. Israel birthed a son. This takes you back in time a little bit and tells you the story of what happened. Christ was born. Herod tried to kill him. That's the dragon trying to kill him. And then he was caught up to the throne and he made war with Michael and the angels. And a third of the stars were cast down. This isn't actual stars falling. This is Satan and his minions were being cast down. Satan was cast to the earth. Just like whenever Jesus was about to die, he said, Now is the time that the prince of this world is cast out. And he has nothing in me. He was talking about Satan coming. Whenever Jesus went up, he made this war. Satan was cast down. And he persecuted them. Satan was still ruling down there. He persecuted them and put them through tribulation, and they withstood him, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And then they fled into the wilderness for those three and a half years. Whenever Christ came, the dead in Christ rose. The living fled Judea and got out and went into the mountains, and that glory cloud followed them. God left the temple. Then the temple was started to be able to be destroyed, and Satan was cast into the uh, bottomless pit right? Um, let me see. And it says that Satan went to make war with the remnant of their, her seed. And this is a huge thing that people don't know. One thing, it's a bad translation. After that, it says, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast coming up out of the sea. That's not what happened. He said, and the dragon stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast coming up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Satan and the beast did not rule at the same time. You'll see that Satan was not there while the beast was ruling. Satan, people think that it says, that it means, and the dragon gave the beast, the beast's power, right? And the beast's authority. That's not what happened. Whenever Satan was going to be thrown into the pit, because he cast a flood out of his mouth after the people, and the earth opened up and swallowed up the flood, right? And then Satan knew that he was going to be thrown into the bottomless pit. And he gave the beast Satan's power, and Satan's authority, right? He knew he wasn't going to be there. It switched to the beast. Jesus could not rule at the same time Satan was ruling. Satan was thrown in the bottomless pit in 66 AD, and Satan gave his power, Satan's power, unto the beast. And then the beast was ruling on earth for 42 months, for that 1,260 days. The same as the dragon had seven heads and seven horns and crowns and the beast took over all that. So this is now the beast ruling, which is the zealots um, in Jerusalem, or even maybe a king of the zealots. Now it's, it's got to be all of the zealots who didn't believe in Christ, who wanted um, to protect the temple and say that it was the temple of God. So from 66 to 70 AD, the trumpets were being sounded. They were reigning with Christ, the first resurrection, the 144,000 that died were reigning with Christ. Those under the altar had to wait until the rest of them died. And then the wrath of the Lamb came under the next seal. And they were given uh, harps of God and all that, and they followed him. And they went with him, and they were given the throne, and they broke the nations into shivers. This was going on over the next three and a half years while the trumpets were sounding. They were ruling. Satan was in the bottomless pit. The believers were out of Jerusalem. 
and the other ones were in. There were still some believers left that did not get out of Jerusalem, of course. And this is whenever the mark of the beast happened, and people were keeping the law for a sign upon their hand and a memorial between their eyes. They were keeping the law rather than Jesus Christ who became the Passover. And once Christ came and started this war, the Passover was no more. The apostles kept it until Christ returned. The apostles took communion until Christ returned. But once Christ came and got the first resurrection, and they were destroying Israel, the Passover is no more. Now it can be destroyed. God is out of the temple. It's no longer God's temple. The man of sin sits in it. God let him have it, right? And Jesus destroyed him with the brightness of his coming and the word of his mouth. A lot of people think that whenever it said the dead in Christ shall rise first, that it was saying, all right, the dead in Christ are going to rise first and poof, we're going to be caught up in the air to meet them. There's no point in even saying that if it was a twinkling of an eye thing. But the dead in Christ rose first. That was the first resurrection of the dead. The rest of the dead lived not again until their reign of Christ was over. So at that point, he said, um, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, for they do rest from their works, or their labors and their works do follow them. Something like that. <clears throat> and he said that they didn't take the mark, that they had to fight against the mark of the beast and stuff. These would have been resurrected at the end. Now, as Jesus and the apostles are doing all these things, making things happen in the earth, including sin in the Romans, as Joel talked about, that it would be a heathen army that came and destroyed the temple on the last day, and that that army was the greatest army that had ever been, and the greatest army that would ever be to the years of many generations. So even after the last day, Rome was still the greatest army for many generations to come. The 144,000 in chapter 14 were seen on Mount Zion. They were transfigured with Christ, and they followed the Lamb whithersoever he went. And then after this, it says Babylon has fallen, has fallen. This is just uh, the fact that God is out of Israel, because Israel is Babylon. And then after that, it says, if any man take the mark of the beast, another angel flew throughout heaven, saying, well, one had the everlasting gospel to preach to everybody. The next said, if any man take the mark of the beast then he'll be tormented with fire day and night, you know, for ever and ever. And the smoke of their torment rose up forever and ever. Maybe not that they were tormented forever, I don't know. In the presence of the Lamb. So in 14, you see the 144,000 were with Christ, following him. They were standing with the harps of God, and they were standing on a sea of glass mingled with fire. Also, whenever it talks about the throne of God, this is important to note that underneath it was a sea of glass. There was a gulf fixed between God and the world, right? There was a portal over Jerusalem, the center of the earth. This is the gate to heaven, and this is the, you know, portal to heaven. This is where the angels came up and down on the ladder. Jacob laid his head, the rock, the temple was built as the gate to heaven, the house of the Lord, because that's the portal that they had, but only they could enter and come. There was a sea of glass. There was a gulf fixed that they couldn't enter, but now you see the 144,000 following Christ with the harps of God, and they sang the song of Moses because they were the first people to look past the law. They were Jews. They were 144,000 Jews. They were the remnant that was saved. They were the dead that rose. They were reigning with Christ for a thousand years. So then it gets into the explanation of the beast and mystery Babylon. Uh, the beast being Rome. I mean, not Rome, sorry. That's what people think it is. All right, Satan ruled Jerusalem. Satan had seven heads. The seven heads are the seven hills of Jerusalem. This is the beast. The beast had seven heads. Let us go up to Jerusalem. It said that these seven heads are seven mountains or seven hills that the whore sits on. The whore is the church, the uh, actual temple of God, or was the temple of God, that sat on these seven hills in Jerusalem. So you've got the beast. But God put in the hearts of the Romans, the kings, the ten kings, to make war with them and to burn her and eat her flesh and burn her with fire and make her desolate, right? They made her desolate. So it explains to you about the whore, Mystery Babylon. In her was found all the blood of all the prophets since the beginning of time. And uh, the apostles were killed by her. Jesus said in Luke, it cannot be that a prophet die outside of Jerusalem. All of the prophets had to die in Jerusalem. And Jesus told the Pharisees in that generation that all the blood of all the prophets would come upon them. In that generation, it would be required at their hands. And in her was found all the blood of all the prophets. So you see, 
Here's the beast. Jerusalem. Seven hills. Ten Roman kings that hated her. They made war with her. Made her desolate. Burned her with fire. All right? And you had seven Jewish kings that it said five were already fallen at that time that it was written. One was ruling then, and one was yet to come. And when he came, he should rule for a short time. These are part of your zealots and people, um, like Simon Barjora, is that his name? But anyway, so they had those kings. And they were going to be destroyed too. Uh, where am I at? Hang on. So it talks about Mystery Babylon. And then these are the vials. Jesus already sounded the trumpets. Everything's done. All right? God pours out the vials. Whenever he goes to pour out the vials, no man could enter the temple in heaven until he was done pouring out the vials. Because at this time, the believers are done. The believers are caught up. Jesus' work is done. Okay? Jesus' work is done. Jesus actually didn't destroy the temple. Jesus destroyed Jerusalem. He destroyed the unbelievers there and everything else. At this time, towards the very end, Satan is let back out of his prison. And an unclean spirit comes out of his mouth and the beast's mouth and the false prophet's mouth. He's let back out. He overcomes the two witnesses. He comes up out of the bottomless pit. He's of the seven. He's the eighth. He went into perdition, right? He came out, and then he went back. He's in perdition, right? He died. It's done. That's over. And he gathered all the armies together after this to come to the great day of God Almighty. And that was one day. Whenever Titus destroyed the temple in 70 AD, Emperor Titus, or became emperor, emperor uh, whenever Titus destroyed the temple, he told them not to destroy it. He didn't want it destroyed. It, was, it had so much riches and gold and everything and all these precious stones and uh, silk and purple and everything. They had so much riches in this temple. Titus did not want it destroyed. In history, after the temple was destroyed, it was utterly burned with fire. And all this happened in one day. And all the people hiding in it were killed in one day. And over a million people died in this one day. Okay, And it was the Passover. Everybody had made their way to Jerusalem for the Passover. They had blood on their posts, thinking that that would protect them. But it's because they rejected Jesus and they took the mark of the beast. They kept the Passover after Jesus already came. Right? Satan's let back out of his prison at this time. Once Jesus finishes his... Satan's let back out of his prison. And the beast, the false prophet, and everybody go and they gather all to Jerusalem because it's time for the Passover. And they make their way from all these different places. If you read in Acts, it talked about how many places they lived. It said, how do we hear them all speak in our own tongues? They were Jews and proselytes and um, from all over. Some of them were from Asia. Some of them were from like Egypt. Some of them were from... They come from the whole world. They make their journey to Jerusalem at this time so that they can be destroyed by God. Titus, was. they tried to offer him an archway. They were going to build him an archway and give him a wreath and everything. And who wouldn't want that? Especially a Roman who wants to be emperor because you got that way through war. So who wouldn't want such a thing? You know, Titus, of course, would want that. But Titus said, this guy, this guy with so much pride and this, you know, thought, you know, just he, he was a, one of, he's a great warrior, you know. He's going to be emperor. He knows it, right? A guy with that much pride, said, I don't want it. He said that it was something out of this world. He said he'd never seen anything like it, basically, if we're putting it in our terms. And he said, I didn't destroy that temple. He said, we didn't destroy it. He said, their God did that. Because it was so crazy how fast it burned and how every single stone fell. It was like God just crushed it with his foot. This was the whore being destroyed. God is the one that destroyed the whore. This is after Jesus fulfills his work. The seventh trumpet sounds. All of it's done. Satan is let back out of his prison. Okay? For a short time, they gather all the armies to come to Jerusalem. All the Jews to come to Jerusalem for Passover to fight the Romans. And the Romans sent in everybody. And then God destroyed their temple and everything in it. I'm sure they got some treasure and everything, so don't take one little thing that I'm saying here and nitpick that thing. But he destroyed their temple. He destroyed it all, and the smoke of their torment went up. Everybody saw them. Do you understand that they traded by the sea? Okay? 
They traded the trade route from China was one of the most important things to the world back then. Was the trade route from China, from Egypt, up to Rome. Jerusalem was that trade route. And the temple was where they traded everything, including slaves for Rome and others, and selling slaves from Rome to others, and purple and silk and all kinds of different uh, money and money changers. and They made Rome really rich in that little area. Jerusalem was super rich also. The greatest temple. So think about this. And then Satan was let out for a short time. They gathered the armies. The first resurrection did not take the mark of the beast, is what it says, because they were out of there before the mark of the beast came. They did not take the mark of the beast. It was the first resurrection. They were the first fruits unto God. The dead did not live again until the thousand years was finished. That thousand year reign is from six, sometime in 66 AD until sometime in 70 AD before the temple was destroyed. Then the marriage supper of the Lamb came, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, and God wiped out in one foul sweep, one stroke, all of Satan's armies, the angels came also. It was a spiritual battle and a physical battle, and all God called the birds in to eat the flesh of all of them, right? The king, captains and kings and mighty men. And all these things. The book of Revelation is really simple. What happened was, Jesus came. Jesus was caught up to the throne. Satan was cast down to the earth. Satan was still ruling. Jesus opened the seals. Down here, now you got Satan and the church fighting. The gospel and him overcoming people. And them preaching and giving power to Christ until 66 AD. This is whenever the wrath of the Lamb comes. The 144,000 rise, just like it said in history. Now they're ruling and reigning with Christ for the next for that thousand year reign. They were given thrones to break them into shivers. They're ruling and reigning. Towards the end of this, Satan is let back out. Then the beast and the false prophet are destroyed. All everything around it worked its way right up to the temple. They were destroyed, and on the last day, the vials were poured out on Mystery Babylon, the temple, the whore that rejected. The greatest thing God ever did that rejected his son. It was all poured out. Satan gathered his angels also. The armies were gathered. Satan gathered his angels. Satan went up to the camp of the saints that were standing on that sea of glass. And he tried to fight them. And God just, done. The beast and the false prophet, lake of fire. Then Satan, all of his angels, lake of fire. Done. Then the books were opened. This is the second resurrection where all the dead from Adam until the end, came up, and the 144,000 judged them, and Jesus judged them, and everybody from Adam and Eve all the way until 70 AD was judged. Every dead person was judged. And then there was no more sea. New Jerusalem, where it used to just be a portal where you could not get to God. Daniel prayed. It took him, I forget how many days he said, what, 14 days, 21 days, before the angel could even get to him because Satan was ruling. You know, he had to get through the prince of the power of Persia or whatever. But, um, so then there's no more sea. New Jerusalem came down out of heaven. And those that live with him, there's no more tears. He wiped them all away from their eyes. There's no more death. There's no more sorrow. And since that time, there is a light whenever you die. Whenever you die, because God is here in this earth, the tabernacle is with men. It's no longer up there. We're no longer waiting for it to be opened. It says in Revelations that it was opened. It's open to us. We don't wait for it anymore. Jesus fulfilled it all. The marriage supper came all in Christ, raised up at the last day. We are not in Christ today. All in Christ, raised up at the last day. The marriage supper came. It was over. It's done. Then the Lord God omnipotent reigns. As Paul said, Jesus would reign for a short time until he put all things under his feet, the last thing being death whenever they should be caught up. He said, then, death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Right? And then people in the ages to come would know the great things that God did. We're supposed to know, and I'm telling you what happened. The great things that God did through Christ to them, the great love that he showed them, and what they did. And they gave us a new heaven and a new earth where Satan is not here. God is there. Everybody has access to God now. We don't need a mediator to come down through a portal, be born into a woman, fulfill everything, and go back up into the sky. Jesus already did that. Now we have a conscience of God from birth today. And that temple is open, and whenever you die, you will see a light. 
And what is the temple? What is the temple? The city. God's the temple. <coughs> but that city is made up of the 144,000. And only good people that die can go into that city. God is all now. God is here for every single person from the time that they are born. And when you die, you no longer wait. You're not in your grave. Death and hell do not exist anymore. You don't wait in your grave as a spirit that's got to be conjured like Samuel was conjured by Saul. You don't wait. That light is open. You are judged by your heart. Everything is made new. The old way is over. Adam and Eve is over. It's all done. The curse is over. Your flesh is no longer weighed in the balance. God doesn't see this thing. All he sees is your heart now. Whenever he looks at the flesh, all he sees is the blood of Christ that ran down onto the flesh. But he still sees your heart. And you people that go back to religion reject everything that he did because you're liars and you condemn everybody else for the exact same thing that you are. And you can't tell one simple truth that your flesh is just as bad as everybody else's flesh. You're no better. Your praying is no better. Your preaching is no better. And you will die and end in the same grave as everybody else. But your spirits are also bad because you rejected all that God did just because you can't see simple truths in your waking life of how to treat people and others. So you won't make it. You'll go. Whenever you die, you're going to go into that light. You're going to see that light because you're evil. And that light, you're not part of that light. You're going to go into it. Or you're going to be a ghost that's afraid of the light. And somebody's going to send you there. Or whenever this war comes towards that's coming, that's going to mirror 70 AD, that's going to make everybody think that it's the end of the world. And then Christianity is finally going to fall. It's already falling drastically. People are realizing everywhere. But whenever this war happens, everybody's going to say, it's it, that's it, that's the end of the world. This is the rapture. This is Jesus coming. And none of it's going to happen. And then you're going to say, everybody for 2,000 years told us this, and every single preacher told us this was going to happen. Well, that wasn't it. Nothing's it. Christianity is finally going to be a thing of the past. The world's going to change. Whenever this happens, every ghost from the last 2,000 years are going to be sucked up into that light. Those who didn't already go. Because if you're a good person and you go into that light, you will enter heaven. You will have work to do. You will have a great eternal life the moment that you die. If you have a good spirit. There is no more sea. You can enter that. But if you're a liar or anything like that, you will not enter. You won't enter. You can go into that light, but you won't enter into the city. You can enter into that light. And you might even go up there thinking, oh, hunky-dory, I got it. I'm going to see Jesus. It's going to be real weird to you whenever God meets you and throws you in prison. There is a prison in heaven. It's in the lower heaven. There's a prison. We've seen it. And you wait there by a judge's podium and a gavel until this time is over. This new age is over. And the world changes again. And then all of you will judge each other. And we'll all give an account for everybody we've ever met and everything we've ever done. Okay? And some people will be thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire was never destroyed. You will be burned up. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire was never cast into anything. It's God's garbage disposal. It's where you go to not exist. To have no bearing on this reality anymore. Your ghost is no longer here. Your spirit is no longer here. You have nothing to offer this. This is the truth, and this is the book of Revelation. And that's what happened. It's already done. Christ already returned. Christianity already ended in 70 AD. Go buy my book. Read it. It already ended. It's over. Now, God is all and in all, and you could live this perfect, happy life where it doesn't matter what you drink. It doesn't matter if you smoke anything. It doesn't matter if you eat anything. It doesn't matter what you wear. It doesn't matter if you like walking around naked. It doesn't matter if you have sex or with who. None of that matters. Yeah, drink it in the kitchen, buddy. Uh, yeah, hang on. I'm trying. All right, here you go. It doesn't matter. That's no longer weighed in the balance. But your heart matters. And you can't just forgive and see that everybody's the same now and you don't understand the work that Jesus Christ did. And now, whenever you die, you're going to go up there, and you're going to get judged. And you're going to have a rude awakening. I told you the book of Revelation. If you go back and take the story that I said, and you read it, you'll understand every single word of it. And people have been wanting to understand it forever. I told you that because my doctrine is true, because God called me to do this. Okay? He called me to do this. That's why what I say isn't all fumbling around like everybody else. They don't even understand, you know? Uh, I, it's, it's ridiculous. They... they they just can't tell the truth, so they don't understand. This is the end of the video. Christianity ended. That's the book of Revelation. That was the thousand-year reign. That was the beast. That was Satan. 
That was Jesus. That was why. That was the lamb slain. That was him taking back the earth. He ruled for a short time, and then he delivered the kingdom back up to God and became subject to the Father. The marriage supper of the Lamb came. The Lord God omnipotent reigns. After Jesus was done reigning for a short time on the earth, that three and a half years, where he did what? What was his reign for? It was to destroy. It was the wrath of the Lamb. It was the 144,000 with him. That was his reign. He destroyed those who destroyed them. And then God smashed the temple. And that was it. That was the last day. And then God destroyed Satan and all of his angels. I saw that in a dream once too. It was just like, have you ever tried to light a sock on fire and it goes like that? Well, Jesus, God, everybody, they were on white horses up here. Uh, the word of God, God himself was on a white horse. And all these devils went up on the little bit lower of a plane. And he just did one. He just shot it and it went... Looked like gasoline lighting on fire. Just ripped right through them. Alright. That was it. Now. Be happy. Don't let anybody judge you. Have a good heart. Then you won't do anything wrong to anybody. You won't murder, molest, steal, nothing. If you know that your flesh is forgiven. You will live a happy life. And if you know that if as soon as you die. That you can enter that light. And go straight into heaven. You'll have no reason to do evil to people. You'll have no reason to try to get gain through stealing. You'll have no reason to murder somebody else. You'd rather die than murder somebody else because you go straight to heaven. You got no reason to be sad. You got no reason to feel lonely. You got no, it doesn't matter. You got no reason to eat healthy and try to stay alive until the coming of the Lord. You know, as they said back then, that they which were alive and remain un uh, remained unto the coming of the Lord. He said them. He said we, talking about them. It's all over. All right. Uh, sorry, I went all preachy, I guess. I'm not sorry. You need to know these things. That was the book of Revelation. That was the thousand year reign. It's all of it. Christianity ended. Do good to other people. Get out of religion.